My name is Rory McLaren. What I'm about to show you is how to test the crowd cylinder on this backhoe which is drifting. Many years ago I uh, conducted a study over a period of a decade on leakage rates in hydraulic components due to wear. After I conducted the study I invented a technology called microleak testing that makes it possible to test about 96 percent of the components in any hydraulic system be it industrial or mobile without starting the engine. It's the safest way to test hydraulic components and the most effective currently available. It's also almost non-invasive. The greatest thing about microleak testing is that while we're performing the tests, the engine, the machine is safely locked out. There's no need to run it. The only transmission lines that need to come off the machine are what we call the suspect lines, where we more than likely find the leakage. The other thing that's interesting about this test is on this particular backhoe, the crowd cylinder and the directional control valve are the only two suspects if I have a drifting problem. So conceivably, I could only test the directional control valve and if it passes the test, I'm done. That means that this test would have taken about five minutes. It actually takes longer to make the machine safe to work on than it does to actually perform the test. So now I'm going to connect the microleak tester to the suspect port. In other words, what we'll do is we'll follow the transmission line from the cylinder back into the directional control valve. Let's say for argument's sake, the transmission line from the cylinder goes to port A of the directional control valve. That's the only transmission line I need to take off. Now don't forget, before you pull any transmission lines off, we have to be able to verify that there's no stored energy in the hydraulic system. Now, that's something that I can't really tell you how to do because it's up to the manufacturer uh, to tell you how to safely de-energize the hydraulic system. So what I'm going to do now is connect the microleak tester up to the port A of the direct control valve and I'm going to perform a microleak test. To do this procedure we need to have a microleak test kit which is available from HydroCheck. Um, the, the kit consists of a microleak test pump, has a pressure gauge, it has a four millimeter uh, transmission line that will connect the pump to the suspect component and it has all of the adapters that you typically need to test almost any machine in the field. So we have a row of uh, pipe, male pipe adapters, we have a row of male uh, o-ring SAE straight thread adapters, we have a row of JIC adapters, we have a row of code 61, SAE code 62, and for those folks who want to troubleshoot Caterpillar valves, we've got a row of the special code 62 uh, fittings used on some Caterpillar equipment. Let me also add that Caterpillar does not endorse these tests or this equipment. We're now going to take the microleak test pump and adapt it to the valve. So we have two options. We can test the cylinder or we can test the directional control valve. If you've got a vertical downdrift on a crowd cylinder on a backhoe, it can only, can only be one of two things. It's either leaking in the cylinder, it's leaking in the directional control valve, or it could be leaking in both. What we're going to do is we'll test the easiest component to test. We'll test the directional control valve, and we may, that's all we may have to test because if the directional control valve passes the test, then of course we default to the cylinder leakage, which means I'm done. So we could be finished this test in all of approximately five minutes. Now don't forget to lock the machine out and de-energize the hydraulic system before you take any lines off. We've removed the transmission line, swivel connector, from the valve, the suspect port in the valve, port A, and now we've put the adapter, the microleak test adapter, onto the port. Now this may look to, to, uh, to some people like a JIC 37 degree that has been drilled and tapped. HydroCheck builds a special JIC connector that makes, that has a thicker top that makes it a, a, a safe for pressure testing because a conventional JIC fitting, the top is, is too thin 
to drill and tap for test pressure testing. So this is a special JIC connector that's been specially made for the purpose of testing safely. I'm now going to connect the microleak tester up to the uh, special adapter on the microleak tester. So you can see now the microleak tester is ready to be used to test this valve. Um, it's got a valve here that we can shut off it's for the pressure gauge 0 to 3000 psi and I'm now ready to pressure leak test into the A port, the suspect port of this valve. Bear in mind that this machine is not running, it's locked out, it's chocked, it's blocked and it's safe for troubleshooting. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll start to pump and the idea is to see if we generate resistance to flow going into the directional control valve. If I can create resistance to flow going into the directional control valve, this means that this valve is in good working condition. However, if I cannot uh, create resistance into this port, then there is a problem inside the directional control valve. All right, now we're going to, to perform the test on the A port of the directional control valve. So I'm going to start to pump, and as you can see, the most I can get out of the uh, pumping into this A port of the valve is about 300 psi. That's not very good. The problem now is that the directional control valve has two suspects in and of itself. It has the spool bore which could be leaking or the cylinder port relief valve or anti-cavitation valve which could be leaking. What micro -leak, leak testing will let us do is it, it will let us isolate the problem between the two. In other words, 95% of the time the problem is not spool bore wear it's damage or wear in the cylinder port relief valve or the anti-cavitation valve. What we'll do is we'll show you how to perform that test uh, at, at, on another video. So the idea then is to go to the shop and I'll, what, what we, it's, it's better to do this actually on a bench in the shop to explain with pictures and illustrations exactly what we're looking for inside the valve. But we do know right now based on this test that there is excessive leakage in the A port of the directional control valve. Now what we'll do is let's test the cylinder just in case. In other words, when you're testing in the field and you find a component is uh, worn, uh, but there are other components in the system, what you don't want to do is order a new component, takes a few days to get there, and when you put the new component on the machine, that, com uh, the com that component is good, but other components in the same circuit are leaking. So what we'll do is we'll run them all down so that if we have to order components or have them rebuilt, when they come in, they'll all be in good working condition. So let's move the test now over to the cylinder, also a non-invasive test. Okay, I'm going to now start pressure leak testing into the A port of this directional control valve. If the valve is good, it'll pressure up to the value of the system's relief valve setting. And as you can see, I'm up at 2,500 PSI. So this valve is in perfect working condition. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So in this particular test, we default to the uh, cylinder. So in other words, in this particular instance, I'm done with this test and I'm going to now just replace the cylinder. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to show you how to test the cylinder, the micro leak tester. So I'm going to stop this test and move over to the cylinder. I'm about to show you the safest and most practical way to field test a hydraulic cylinder. It doesn't matter what the cylinder is on, it doesn't matter how big it is, uh, it doesn't matter uh, if it's on a haul truck, it could be on a 994 Caterpillar machine, it doesn't matter. This test is non-invasive. This machine is locked, tagged, chocked and blocked. And all I'm going to do now is remove the transmission line from the bottom port of the cylinder and the top port. Now when testing cylinders, the rule is always test in the opposite direction to which the cylinder is drifting. This uh, uh, crowd cylinder was drifting out, which means that the suspect seal is the seal on the closed end of the cylinder and there's only so when we're testing a cylinder that is drifting we must always assume there's two seals inside the cylinder so what you want to do is it could have seal damage on the one side doesn't have to be damaged on the other side so what we're going to do now 
is we're going to test the cylinder to see if it's bypassing internally without even starting the engine. So I've got, I've, I'm ready for the test. I've got the micro leak test, uh, testing uh, apparatus connected to the cylinder, and I'm now going to start the pressure in. Now a hydraulic cylinder is a zero leaker by design, so I should have, so I should have no leakage whatsoever. So I'll start to pump in just to make up a, a little bit of the lost oil that, the, the, that might have uh, come out of the cylinder while I was taking the connectors off. And now I'm going to pressure up to 2000 PSI. And as you can see, it's holding. There's almost no leakage at all. In fact, according to this pressure gauge here, there's no leakage at all. So if, uh, if uh, the test is over, as you can see, it took all of five minutes. The machine is locked out. And uh, so if the suspect, for example, in this case was the cylinder or the directional control valve, I've now eliminated the cylinder as being a suspect component. So it puts me back into the directional control valve, which I now have to isolate between the spool bore wear and, of course, the uh, cylinder port relief valve cartridge, which again is another five minutes worth of work at full lockout. So these tests are very simple. They're very effective, and more than that, they, there is no safer way to test hydraulic components than with micro-leak testing. So bear in mind, there are only two components really you can test with flow meters, hydraulic pumps and hydraulic motors. The rest is all micro-leak testing, pressure relief valves, directional control valves, check valves, uh, direct, uh, um, any, uh, any type of valve uh, outside of, uh, uh, of uh, pumps and motors is all done with this clean micro leak testing. So again, um, what we'll be doing on future videos is be showing you how to test other hydraulic components uh, in the in hydraulic systems, both industrial and mobile, so you can see what troubleshooting or uh, let's say performance testing hydraulic components is done. One word of caution: there are a lot of people who take transmission lines off for testing. You don't want to do that. Never ever take a transmission line off and start a hydraulic system up, regardless of who tells you to do that. There are manufacturers who will recommend you take the lines off and start up. But before you do that, read their safety information. It clearly states, and I'll give you the generic warning in the industry, discharging high pressure oil to atmosphere under power can cause severe injury, death, or substantial property damage. They are absolutely right. So never take a transmission line off a hydraulic component for testing and test to atmosphere because it can cause debilitating injuries like oil injection, burn injuries, uh, eye loss, severe eye injury. Uh, people have suffered these injuries before. So we never want to go to atmosphere under power for testing any hydraulic components. So until another, uh, we make another YouTube video, keep watching. We'll make more. And if anybody wants to learn about pressure leak testing, I do workshops on teaching people how to do this firsthand. I've written a number of books about it, which are available at hydrocheck.com, and we'll post that so you can see it on the YouTube video. So thanks for watching. Work safely.